welcome back. Um, I'm just back from the club now. I didn't take any intro videos earlier, I don't think. I might have done, I can't remember. Um, I took Big Jinty with me to the club. Uh, and while I unload from the car, let's take a look at the sort of highs and lows from the day. Um, yeah, I'll talk you through what we're what we're looking at as we go. Regulator's nice and tight. Then. Yeah. So, as you see, we had the hydraulic test. Uh, all successful. Uh, the only issue was the uh, pressure gauge. Uh, it was reading slightly high, which isn't in itself too much of a problem. It was a little bit past the tolerance that is allowable. So we, we allow 10%. Uh, but when you get um, a pressure gauge that's reading too high, that's not the end of the world because when the pressure gauge is reading 90, in this case, the pressure gauge was reading 90, which was the red line. Although that was another thing, there wasn't a red line on the gauge. Um, so the pressure gauge reading 90, it only actually had 80 pound in the boiler. That's the way it would way round it was. So it was reading on the safe side. So we wouldn't necessarily be too worried about that. Although it was towards the limit of what we tolerate. And for my own benefit, I would rather have 90 pounds in the boiler when it says 90 pounds. I want the most possible pressure there for available power. And as I just mentioned, the red line was missing. So using a, some paint and a screwdriver blade, uh, we put the red line on. So I'll show you now the pressure gauge reading correctly once we'd um, tweaked the gubbins. Uh, so reading correctly now with the red line. Here you go. So with them then done, um, the hydraulic complete, we went on to steam test. Uh, we steamed it up. Uh, I tried out both my new whistles. Uh, here's the first one followed by the second one. Uh, I'll let you decide which one was better. So there you go, there's the two whistles. Uh, let me know what one you thought was better. The first one was the smaller tube, the second one was the bigger tube. I wasn't convinced by the bigger tube one when it was on air in the workshop, but for the time being, I've left that one on the engine. So, uh, the rest of the steam test. Um, the safety valves didn't quite evacuate previously when I picked up the engine. So we take, took a look at them, we've changed the ball. They're working better, uh, but take a look. So unfortunately that was another fail, um, although they evacuated enough, and they did really evacuate a lot better now, uh, they, one of them, uh, since we made new adjusters, we couldn't screw it down far enough without losing the lock nut from the top. I'll, I'll show you in a moment where that was. Um, we were only getting up to about 75 pounds for where they were lifting. So that one needs to be screwed down more. But by that time we decided we were going to make new bodies anyway. Um, 
they weren't closing again as as well as we'd like. So the the seat wasn't the seats weren't quite correct uh, for what we wanted to achieve. So we're going to make new bodies um, and then go again with the steam test. So for now, that's that's finished. Take a look at where the where the adjuster had ended up. But they do look nice. They're, it, it's getting there. We, we're getting close to it running. That was the only issue with the steam test. So almost done. See, they were uh, a bit on the or already halfway through the nut, the adjuster nut um, or locking nut. So that needed sorting out just to just a touch. So on to the visiting Jinty's boiler. Uh, let's take a look. As you see, we've done a bit of a test on the Jinty. They both work well. It's still a bit of a which one do I use? I've gone for the bigger one at the moment. But I'll keep a smaller one with me when I go out and about, so I can always change it if I fancy it. Um, but we're going to take, have a quick look at the other Jinty boiler. I've just plugged it up, filled it up with water, and I'm going to take a look around it. So we've got at least one weeping stay on the right hand side. Some on the right hand side as well. Hopefully, oh, it's hard to see down there. But there's definitely things weeping. So we have got water around that superheater flue. There's also some around the joint between the tube plate and the barrel. This side of the firebox looks pretty good. The top of the crown is looking okay. The bottom half of the back head looks okay. But we've got a bit of a weep around the fire hole door. The rest looks good, even that suspect bit at the top of the joint there. And the left hand side of the firebox is looking okay. There's a tiny hole under the, on the throat plate. As you may have just heard Luke say, there's a little weep on the top right as we view it of the throat plate. In a firebox at the front end, that top centre stay is weeping. There is more, but I think that's around the sides running down. I'll have to dry that out and take a look. There's a couple on this side. I think it's just this one and that one. We'll try and dry it out, let the pressure drop, and then pump it up again. Yeah, so it's coming out of that stay there. And that stay there. Side. So it's leaking from that crown stay there. Otherwise I think this side doesn't look too bad. Where did that drip come from? Oh, it's coming from that one off the valve. But this side of the firebox actually looks okay. It's uh, leaking a bit of blood over there. That came off of me. Yeah. So there we go, that's where we're at. Um, a bit more cleaning up to be done on the the boiler. I hadn't thought that the 
firebox was leaking previously. So that's why I hadn't overly stressed about cleaning it, uh, but that will be the next job. One of you on Facebook, not Facebook, one of you on YouTube has suggested oven cleaner. I'll give that a go uh, to try and get rid of some of the carbon. And then beyond that, it's just going to be mechanically clean it, keep going with wire brushes and, and whatever to really clean up that firebox, which shows to be more of an issue than the tube plate, to be fair. But both will get looked at. Um, so there was probably half a dozen stays inside the firebox, which are a problem. Uh, I will try and silver solder them. Um, that was my preference. If I can't get it clean enough, if I can't get the silver solder to stay, then it may end up being a bit of a console to just finally seal it. But that's the plan. Uh, so, I hope you've enjoyed what I've done today. Um, or, or found it informative, at least. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you another day. Take care.